Hello friends, welcome back to the shop. Today is Sunday, July 28th, and it's hot again here in southeastern Pennsylvania. Apparently we're heading into a uh, another heat wave, uh, but that's okay. The mornings have actually been really nice. I, I like on the weekends to uh, sit outside and have a cigar if I can in the morning, and I get up fairly early. So I was sitting out yesterday, and the temperature was uh, 59, and it was actually, you know, just by comparison to what we've been normally having, it felt very chilly. I almost considered getting a, a long sleeve shirt, but by the time I would have gotten a long sleeve shirt, the temperature would have increased because <laughs> uh, it, you know, warms up pretty quickly as the sun comes up. But anyway, it's 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 been pleasant weather in the mornings. It's getting hot again. 91 today, I think. And I know, and you know, I've seen a lot of guys posting about the temperatures in their areas. I know it's it's hotter in other places, so just hang in there. Fall will be here soon enough, and snow. So today, uh, what I wanted to talk about was uh, an email that I got this morning, and you know, it, it it's one of these phishing emails. Uh, if you're not familiar, well, first off, I know that I've got a um, sort of broad demographic watching me, so there's guys that are in my age group and older, and we don't necessarily know what this phishing is, and that's phishing with a PH. Um, you know, it, it's got nothing to do with, with uh, flies or lures or uh, worms. Uh, and then there's the guys that are younger than me, and, and they probably think it's got something to do with a Grateful Dead wannabe band, but it, it's not. Uh, this is a process that uh, people use, uh, nefarious people use, to try to get access to your online accounts. And the basic premise is that they send you an email that appears to be an email from, uh, for example, YouTube. And they say there's a problem with your YouTube account. Please send us your account details and we'll fix it. And these can range from ridiculous attempts, and the one I'm going to share with you today is a ridiculous attempt, all the way up to very professional looking um, attempts where it's difficult to to decide whether or not this is a real uh, email. So I've put together I guess six tips and I'm gonna have to remember what number six is because I didn't write it down but I wrote down five tips um, to help you deal with these emails when they come in. And this is not just a, 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 an email thing, it's a phone thing, and I'll, I'll try to remember to talk a bit about that uh, as, as we go through here. So, I'm going to talk about this in the context of an email that I got this morning. I'm going to share that with you and show it to you. Uh, but before I get to that, uh, there's, there's a couple of things that you can do just to protect yourself in general. So, this, phishing is... Um, it's pretty common. It's actually the way that uh, WikiLeaks got Leon Panetta's email during the last uh, presidential election. Uh, you know, they sent him an email saying there's a problem with your account, please send us your password, and he did. Uh, it turns out his password was actually something really simple, like password, so they didn't really need to do that. Uh, and, and that gets us to the first tip, which is be smart about your your password. You know, don't use your pet's name or your kid's names or, you know, because there's a lot of personal information available about you online. And these people will collect that information up and just sit there and try various permutations of that to try to get into your account. And, you know, if it's something really simple like your anniversary date, they'll get it. And so, so that's the first thing. Don't use a simple password. Use something complex. Um, with a, a good tip is to, you know, if you're going to use your kids' names, change all the uh, vowels to numbers. So, uh, and, you know, like for example, uh, an E would be a three, you know, or make up whatever, whatever system you want to make to do that. But uh, make it difficult. Uh, make it as difficult as possible for them to, to get in without having to do something else. And then, and this is a really big one. So when I got this email today, so the email that I'm going to put up some screenshots of this, it's an email from YT Support. So immediately there's a red flag there because I don't think YouTube calls itself YT. But even if it was YouTube Support, I it came to my Canerod Piper Gmail account. Now that's the Gmail, that's the account that I have up on uh, my About page. 
It's the account that I'll give you if you ask for my email information in a comment. It's the account that uh, people contact me regarding pipe repair and restoration. If anyone on Instagram wants to get in touch, that's the account that they get in touch through. Uh, if anyone on Twitter wants to get in touch, that's the account that they get in touch through. But it is not the account that YouTube, Instagram, or Twitter have been registered under. So when YouTube sends me an official email, it doesn't go to that account. It goes to a different account that I don't use publicly. Um, and the same thing for the other social media platforms. And the same thing for any online presence. So, uh, for example, my, my website is not registered under that email account. It's registered under a different email account that uh, I never use publicly. So that protects me because if I get an email from any of those um, organizations to Canerod Piper, I know immediately that it's not real because they wouldn't contact me there. They don't even have it. That information. I mean, they could find it, but it's not. It's not in their records. It's not the first place they would look for me. So, tip number two: If you haven't already, go set up a new email account and go into all your YouTube's and Instagrams and all of that, and change your contact email to that new account. Not the contact email for people getting in touch with you. The contact email that Instagram and Twitter and YouTube will use to know who you are. Gmail accounts are free. It. It'll take you a half an hour to do that and it's well worth it for the peace of mind. Okay, so let's get into this email and I'll put up some screenshots here. So, first off, the email is coming from YT Support and you can expand out the information that you get on, you know, from that. So normally you'll just see YT Support but you can, there's usually a little button that you can click and you can get more information about it and okay so if you click that button you will get um, additional information so here you see that this is from YT support and the actual email address is yt-controller at mail.ru so why is YouTube sending me an email from a Russian email address why are they not using a YouTube based email address? You know, it should be at YouTube. You know, even if it was from Russia, it would be from YouTube.ru. Uh, so, there are multiple issues with this email address. So, that's the first red flag. This does not appear to be from YouTube. Now, as we move into the body of the email, it's got a nice YouTube logo up at the top. And that's important. Don't be fooled by logos. I mean, you. They, I can make an email look like it comes from anyone, but I can't send it from them. So pay attention to the email address. Don't don't think too much about the logo on the email or how it looks, how it's worded. That's a secondary issue. The first issue is where has it come from. Next, in terms of the email itself, read it carefully. So this is an example where, yeah, this is easy. You, nobody would, I hope, nobody would get taken in by this. So let me read it to you. It's comical in places, and uh, but it gives you kind of an idea of how bad these things can be. Hello, Cane Rod Piper. They know who I am. There is a allegation has come by a report about your channel. Conatins, they meant contains, but they spelled it wrong, spam videos. There is no need disturbance for that. Oh, thank God. Our team is going to mail you about review when the review is finished. Please reply this mail by filled in the questionnaire that we send to you. If you don't fill in the questionnaire and our team fails to review your channel as a result of it, your channel will be closed because of it. We are thankful for your patience. So, this is obviously coming from somebody that does not have a mastery of English. I don't think YouTube would be employing such a person to be drafting their emails, but that's secondary because this could be coming from within the U.S. There could be somebody within the U.S. trying to get access to your account, and they could draft a perfect email. So you can't rely on that. Look at the email address first. That, that's really the most important thing. Next, what is the information that they're asking about? Think about that. So here's the questionnaire. It's a fairly simple questionnaire. They want to know the channel URL, whether or not it's copyrighted, and my channel password. Now think about this. They sent me an email saying there's an issue with my channel, but they don't have the channel URL. 
the URL being the, the web address, www. Um, why wouldn't YouTube know what my URL is if they're sending me an email about my channel? Secondly, why do they need me to tell them whether or not it's copyrighted? That information should be readily available to YouTube. And third, why do they need my password? No reputable online entity is ever going to ask you for your password. Period. It will never happen. Because your password should be in an encrypted data file that they not only don't have access to, but they don't want access to. Uh, that's where they lock all your personal information. So if it's an online retailer, that's where your credit card information is stored. They don't want to see it. They just want to be able to move the data from one place to another. They don't need your password. They, YouTube does not need my password to do anything on my account. They've proven that. They've actually taken videos down. Uh, they, they've you know, demonetized all that. They can do anything they want in my account, and that's fine because they're YouTube. Uh, they don't need my password. So this is obviously a, a phishing attempt. Uh, we, we now can be pretty certain. The last tip is that when all else fails, if it just doesn't feel right to you and none of these obvious red flags have come up, then go ahead and contact the company. But don't contact them through that email. Go to their webpage, find their official contact information, send them a copy of the email and just say, hey, is this real? Um, because that, that's sort of your last line of defense if you're, if you're uncertain. So hopefully you followed the first couple of tips and you can pretty easily discard it because it came to the wrong email address. Uh, if that's not the case, hopefully it's obviously phishing. But if you still just don't feel right about it, get in touch with the company and ask them what's going on. Now this doesn't just happen online and I wanted to tell you quickly uh, about uh, some experiences I've had recently with telephone phishing. Uh, I've been getting these calls probably two or three times a week uh, claiming to be from Pico. Now Pico is the Philadelphia Electric Company. If you live in Philadelphia you probably are a Pico customer. I live out in the suburbs and as you move out from Philadelphia it's less and less likely but my area code is still a Philadelphia area code, so they don't know where I live. They just know that I'm potentially a Pico customer. And they call me and they say that they're calling from Pico, and they, they have a very heavy Indian accent. Uh, and they usually say something ridiculous like, this is Steve. Uh, and you know the guy's name is not Steve. <laughs> and he's calling from Pico because there's an issue with my account and I'm paying too much. Now, normally I just hang up on them or I tell them to take me off their list or whatever, but they keep calling. They're very persistent. So I decided to start to talk to them. Now, of course, I'm not going to give them any information because I'm not a Pico customer. <laughs> so I'm, I'm really not, I, I know for certain that these guys are not, uh, are not authentic. But nevertheless, I, I decided to try to like probe a little bit and find out some more information. So uh, they called me once and said, you know, there's a problem with your account, you're paying too much. And I said, oh, wow, that's really interesting. Uh, can you tell me more? Oh, yes, yes, we'd, we'd like to give you more information. Uh, what, what is your account number? And I said, well, we, you're calling from Pico, aren't you? Oh, yes, yes, we're Pico. Said, well, you have my account number. You called me. Oh, of course we have access to your account number. I said, well, good. You, you, you look it up. Well, it would be much faster if you gave it to us. I said, no, I'll, I'll, it's okay. I don't know where it is anyway. You got to look it up. And it's just this long, long, silent pause. Um, you know, are you sure you don't want to find it? And so, why would Pico need my account information if I was a Pico customer and they were calling me for an issue on my account? You, you get the idea. Um, and you can have fun with these people, but uh, be careful with what you say to them because you don't want to give them any personal information. And keep in mind, the longer, okay, if, if I'm eating dinner and they call, I just hang up. But if I've got the time, the longer I keep them on the phone, that's time they're not spending calling someone else and potentially getting them into a scam. So I kind of enjoy it. And the more you annoy them, the more likely they are to, like, flag your phone number and stop calling you. So, anyway, guys, I hope that you found these tips in, uh, useful. Um... I'll try to maybe summarize them in, the, in the, the description so that you just got a quick ready reference if you want it. And uh, beyond that, 
good luck out there. Be careful and uh, take care of your information. So folks, I didn't mention, but this is my uh, 7LE311, I think, a uh, gift from my friend Christian that I really love, and uh, I've been enjoying Haunted Bookshop as I've talked to you, uh, because Cornell and Deal has apparently purchased my soul. I hope you have a great week, folks. Um, take care of yourselves, and until we speak again, I'll look forward to talking to you all again very soon. Goodbye now.